Is your HVAC system making you sick? In today's video, I wanna talk about something that I think is not nearly talked about enough in our industry. We do videos all the time and I see other videos out there. We focus way too much on brands and equipment and different types of things that at the end of the day, I don't wanna say they don't matter, but I don't think they matter near as much and affect you near as much as what we are going to talk about today. And I wanna start out as we dive into this and share a few statistics with you that you may or may not have known. The first one is that statistics have shown that on average, the average American spends almost 90% of their entire time indoors. Now, I'm sure there's some ins and outs of that, right? Where you live, the climate, how much time you specifically spend indoors. But I think you get the point. The fact that we spend so much time indoors, now talking about what is going on indoors makes a big difference, right? And other statistics have shown that the indoor air quality of our home is much lower than the outdoor air that we breathe. The EPA estimates that indoor air is two to five times dirtier than the air outside of our home. Now, before you turn me off, because I've told folks things like that before, I remember talking to a lady a few months ago and we were talking about ventilation and air quality and such. And she was saying to me, well, Josh, the air outside of my home, the things that make me sneeze and all the things I'm allergic to are outside. We're gonna get to that in just a moment. But let me share a couple more crazy statistics with you. The World Health Organization has said that the indoor air pollution is responsible for 3.8 million deaths annually. 22% of adult deaths from pneumonia, 19% of adult deaths from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, 6% of lung cancer deaths. So you kind of get the point. The indoor air we're breathing is dirty and it's where we spend the most amount of our time. So in this video, I wanna talk about a few things that you can do to dramatically affect the air that you and your family are breathing in your home. Now, we can talk about all kinds of things, right? There are all kinds of products out there. There are air cleaners and air filtration and all these great products. I'm not gonna say that any of those are bad. In fact, I have a lot of those products in my home. I have an ionizer and a UV light shining on my evaporator coil in my home. I think ultimately it gets overwhelming for a lot of homeowners. I'm in this trade and I think it's a little overwhelming. I teach classes to other heating and air technicians and I know sometimes they feel lost. There's so many products. A lot of them do different things. Sometimes knowing which one to recommend to the customer and wanting to ultimately recommend something that's going to actually fix the issue that that customer is having, it gets overwhelming sometimes. So in this video, I want to break it down. We've done other videos talking about indoor air quality, but in this video, I want to break it down real simple on three things that I think you as a homeowner or as a tech, if you see this video, but ultimately that you can focus on that will make a dramatic difference in the overall air of your home. The first one I want to talk about is something called ventilation. And ultimately, there's different types of ventilation. Basically, the idea is we're going to bring some of that good, clean, fresh air outside the home into the home more. And again, that lady I was talking to a few months ago that was telling me, well, Josh, all that stuff I'm allergic to is outside the home. There is things you can do to the air as you're bringing it in to filter it and get that stuff out of the air. But the thought process here is, if you've got things in your home like VOCs and other things that are harmful to breathe, another thing a lot of folks are focusing on now is something called off-gassing. So even if you get more insulation in your home, they're finding out that all this stuff is not good to be breathing in, right? If you're putting that stuff in your home because you're now breathing it in more, it's right in your home with you, that the off-gassing of these products is not good for your health. So ventilation is going to dilute all of that. Is it removing it? No, I don't think that there's any products that can 100% remove all VOCs from your home. And as homes get tighter and tighter, especially if you have a newer home, it becomes harder and harder to escape these VOCs and other things that we're breathing that are harmful. So first, First thing to focus on, I think, is ventilation. Get some fresh air being brought into that home. You can filter it. You can run it through a dehumidifier. You can do all the things you need to do to make it good, clean air for you to breathe. But ultimately, we've already determined that 
outside air is cleaner, we're gonna bring it into the home and make that what you're breathing in the most. The next thing I wanna focus on is humidity. This is something that I think is overlooked way too much in our industry. Again, a lot of guys will recommend other products like air cleaners and stuff like that, but they don't think about the fact that this home is getting too high of humidity or too low of humidity and how much that affects the overall breathing of the occupants of that home. There's actually a sweet spot here, right? And I've heard different statistics. You know, I've heard folks saying that that range needs to be anywhere from 40 to 60%. I've heard other statistics where they'll say 30 to 50, whatever that sweet spot is. In my state, it's a little more humid. I live near the coast of Virginia and sometimes certain parts of the year, getting that humidity significantly lower than 60% is a big ask. But I think if you can get it in that sweet spot, somewhere close to 50%, you're gonna avoid a lot of the issues that breathing this dry or humid air causes. Ultimately, if humidity gets too low, you're susceptible to certain things happening, certain diseases and so on. If humidity gets too high, then you're now opening the door for other things like mold and other big issues. So finding that sweet spot, meaning if you live in a drier air environment, you might have to add some humidity to that air certain times of the year, if not the entire year. And then of course, those of us that live in more humid environments, putting a dehumidifier in and trying to lower that humidity. Finding that sweet spot is important. And the biggest analogy that I would use is just understanding that this is kind of a preventative measure, right? It's one thing to say, well, the humidity got too high or too low and it caused all these issues. So I had to add more air cleaners to my home and try to get that air to be cleaner, not realizing if you were to get that humidity in that sweet spot and try to avoid some of these issues that high or low humidity would cause. I'm not saying an air cleaner is a bad thing, but maybe it's not as much needed at that point. So that was the big two. I think ventilation and humidity are the two that are most overlooked. I think that they will dramatically affect the air you're breathing in your home. I will put some products down in the description of this video that I think will help with some of these matters. You may need to get a pro involved. Installing some of these products may involve getting some new electric ran, maybe having some ductwork installed, but whatever needs to be done, I'm gonna put some of my favorite products down in the description of this video. But in addition to all of that, I wanna just throw in the last one here, because again, we've talked about UV lights and ionizers and all these other great air cleaning products out there. The one that I wanna just throw in on the back end of this video is the fact that old school filtration is still very much important here, because a lot of the particulates and things that are floating through the air, if you were to to just filter that air, removing those things from the air. Now that you've got better ventilation and better humidity in the home, the air you're going to be breathing is going to be significantly better. And now I'm not saying run out to the local hardware store and buy one of these expensive filters because you could affect the overall performance and life of your heating and air system if you're not careful. If you install one of these in the, say, return duct where you originally had an old school fiberglass filter and now you're restricting the air more, you're adding more static to that airflow, you could be causing more issues. So I do think that there is some value here in getting a pro involved, someone that knows what they're doing, that will actually use a static pressure meter and make sure that the products that they're installing does not affect the performance or life expectancy of your heating and air system. But there are products out there that will filter the air great and not affecting the static pressures or airflow of your heating an air system. There's bypass filters out there. There's all kinds of different products that you can look at, but ultimately installing some better filtration in your home, installing a, a way to remove some of the particulates and viruses. And some of these filters are so good that they can remove viruses and bacteria from the air that you breathe. Microscopic things that you may never even see, it can remove that. So again, I'm not saying avoid these other products. If you've got a pro telling you, hey, it's a good idea to get a UV light installed on this evaporator coil. Maybe they can show you a picture or two of why they think that. I think all of those products have their place and they're good things, but this is where I would start. I would start with ventilation. I would start with humidity control and I would start with better filtration. I'll put a link down in the description of this video of some of my favorite filters as well. And I hope this all helps. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about four tips for better efficiency from your heating and air system. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. 
We'll see you next time.